This is not the formal opening of the meeting, as Lindy just pointed out. This is budget training. The formal opening will come after budget training. So please consider this the informal welcome and um, with gratitude to, to all who are here and um, in particular to Lori and Brian, who I guess will be um, chief among those who will be leading us through the, the budget training. Um, so should I turn it over to you, Brian? Yes, and uh, I will. I don't want to. I'm not going to belabor the point, but this is really. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Lori. Lori is uh, our business administrator, and uh, we've been talking about this budget training a lot over the last uh, few days. So, without further ado, Lori. Welcome. So, I'm on page four of the budget packet. Um, this training has typically been focused on how tax rates are calculated and how the budget process kind of comes all together. So I hope that's what everybody came here for. Um, it's on page four is a one page summary that was developed a few years ago with feedback from the board at the time. If this training needs a little bit more improvement, I'm happy to take feedback at the end. Um, but we're really here today to talk about the budget process and how it implicates the tax rates in the towns. So everybody on page four? Okay. So um, the budget process has several components. The first component is the budgeted expenditures in the general fund. And so what I gave you on this document was the final numbers after last year's budget process and after town meeting. Yes, Scott. Um, Lori, I, I'm so sorry to cut you off. Um, I'm not sure if everybody who is here actually has access to page four. Is it possible, maybe um, while you're talking, if someone in the meantime could put up, uh, could share a screen showing that page? Does Jim have authority to do that, Brian? I do, and, and uh, I'm actually going to pull it up right now. Okay, great. Okay. I was trying to figure out who would have the permissions to do that. <laughs> no problem. This will take 15 seconds. I'll have it up on the screen here. That's fine. No need to delay, Lori. Go ahead. Okay. So last year, our, our budget was $35,430,502. So I'm going to just show you. It's like at the top right here. Um, here it is. And it has an A beside it. Do you see that line? So that was the voter approved budget total. Um, when we're calculating tax rates, that's a number that's really important. And that number gets finalized so that we're prepared for town meeting. Usually it gets finalized by the first or second week in January. So right now we're in the initial stages of the budget process for this year, but I just wanted you to know that that number for this year wouldn't get finalized until early to mid January. Um, the state has a formula for calculating tax rates and what it involves is subtracting off revenues that are related to the budget and those that are gonna help reduce the tax rate. So I'm just gonna describe the categories. It's interest income, tuition from school districts and individuals. Um, we have miscellaneous income other, which includes um, things like the E-rate reimbursements. Um, and we have some miscellaneous state reimbursements like transportation aid, um, driver's ed, we get a reimbursement for that, um, et cetera. Um, then there's special ed reimbursements for expenditures. So last year, the total of all of those revenues that were in the budget was about 7.3 million, and I gave it the letter B. When you subtract the two numbers, it comes up to a local education spending number, which is a little over 28 million. Um, so it's basically taking the A minus the B to come up with the local ed spending. That's the number that um, drives the tax rate. Um, so those are the numbers that the board can control. You can control how much you budget for. You can control um, some of those budget items have revenues that offset them. Um, but to this point, that's pretty much the control that the board has in the tax rate and in the um, calculation process. The next line is the equalized pupils. 
And what um, you need to know is that typically that's supposed to be finalized by December 15. Last year was a rare year that there was a software issue um, at the state level. And so it was until June that we finally received the final equalized pupils that were used in the tax rate. Um, in the memo that I prepared, <clears throat> I gave you the details of the formula. So I just wanted to touch on some of the highlights on that formula, um, just so you were aware of those. And the formula takes the two-year average of our district students. It doesn't count um, tuition students. The town who sends the tuition students gets to count those students. Um, so it's again, just the district students. It gives us um, uh, some students a value for the number of state place students who come in to the district. Some of them come and go. So they take an actual uh, from the prior year, a single year and add that into that formula. They also give us some weighting. Um, and so I was just gonna describe what they give for weighting and why. Um, there's a state statute that identifies the weighting. So we get an extra 0 0.2 or 20% for English as a second language students. We also receive some students in this value for poverty and that's a 25% formula. And then we um, have a reduction for preschool students. Um, preschool students are only attending for 10 hours a week. So the state has a reduction of 46% because they're not counted as a full student. When we get going, um, the state realized that high school waiting is 13% that it costs more to educate a high school student than elementary school students. So they take our high school students and increase them by 13%. And when you get all said and done, they realize we've added in what we call fake students to this formula. So at the end, there's a statewide reduction um, due to the fact that we want to come back to this total of the real students in this formula. So last year, the state reduced by about 5%. It was, they had us put in 94.931 as a reduction. So it's subtracting that equals a 5% reduction. Um, so that's how we come up to the 1,440 students, and it's very complicated. I have files a mile deep, but I was trying to abbreviate it so that you guys could better understand why this isn't really just a body count. It's an equalized pupil count. Again, the formula is in state statute. Um, if a school district in any year um, has the equalized pupils move downward of a significant amount, the most um, they have a hold harmless provision, which is a 5% window. So the least you could go down would be to 95% of that number that we're looking at right now, the 1440 for a single year. And then it could go down 5% each year. But if a school had a significant drop in enrollment, um, that's one way that the formula helps to protect the tax rate. Am I going too fast? I'm looking for nods. I can't really see everyone's face because of the screen share. Okay, thank you. Um, so the other piece of the formula, um, it takes um, the $28 million local ed spending and it divides it by the equalized pupils. And that is the local um, spending per equalized pupil. So you can see that last year, the final number for us was $19,531 per equalized pupil. The property yield is set by the legislature. They set this after this, you know, just prior to the session ending in, um, I think it was June. Um, that number changed. Um, we will we'll receive a number for an estimate for next year on December 1st. It's, it's the letter from the tax commissioner. So last year, for example, it was about $10,700 when we received our letter. And the legislature increased that value before they set the actual tax uh, formula uh, prior to the session ending. I've kind of babbled on. Um, but anyway, so what you do is you divide the local spending per equalized pupil by that property yield, and it comes up with a, a spending increase that we're spending above that number by 77.59%. And that's G. And when you get all wait, done, that. Laurie, yes. Wait, Laurie, I'm sorry, it's Jill. So wait, let me just ask you a question. So 
it, so what would make that spending adjustment be at a hundred and not be over it? What would have what would have had to happen? We would have had to spend less in order for that to that adjustment to not be so off. Or are right. We, we would have had to like, spend ten thousand nine hundred and ninety eight dollars per pupil instead of the nineteen five thirty one. Okay, got it. Right. Thank you. Right. I appreciate the question. Um, does anyone else have a question before I move on? Okay, um, so that dollar seventy seven is the equalized tax rate for the entire Washington Central um, Unified Union, and that tax rate would be the same in every town if they had a common level of appraisal of a hundred percent. I think um, you might be aware that the common level of appraisal at every town changes. It's based on sales in the town through a formula. So what happens is every year in December, we receive the common level of appraisal from the, um, I think it's the tax department, somebody, the property and evaluation department. And so I, what I'm giving you here is the common level of appraisal that we received last December. So you will see that Berlin was appraised over 100%. Callis, um, East Montpelier and Middlesex are under 100% and Worcester's right around 100%. So the closer they are to 100% means the closer they are to that equalized tax rate. So what happens is, is any given year, the budget could be finished. And even if the budget was the same as the prior year, if the common level of appraisal changes and if the property yield changes, um, then that could change the tax rate. And it, it's kind of like a moving part. So as we get moving along in the budget process, you'll see this sheet uh, prepared I plan to have it for the December 16th budget for this year. But I, what I wanted to show you was how last year ended, just so that you have that as a starting point. Um, so you can see over to the right, um, I put in current. So what that 18,657 was, is the local ed spending per equalized pupil in the prior budget cycle. So you can see at Washington Central, our local ed spending per equalized pupil went up 4.68% last year. Our property yield, you can see where that went up 3.29%. So the state, if, if, the, if we had increased by 3.29%, then we wouldn't have had a tax increase. That's another way to consider it. Um, but our increase was greater. And so our tax rate did go up. It went up from a dollar seventy-five to I don't know if you see that on the right-hand side. Um, it went up by two point four cents on average if everyone was at a hundred percent if every town. So I'm kind of giving you a lot of data. Um, I'm sure some of you may have questions after tonight, and I'm happy to take an email or talk to you personally if you have a question. Uh, but I just wanted you to really understand kind of what happened last year. Um, so you can see that down at the bottom, I was comparing the local impact on what happened with the budget. Berlin ended up with a not even a penny increase. Callis and East Montpelier had the largest increases of 4.2 and 5.5 cents. And Middlesex had a, and Worcester had a reduction in their tax rate. So just kind of that's the summary of where I am. And I'll pause and ask if anyone has questions right now about that. Uh, Gloria, it's still again. So is this, can I sum it up this way? Um, so there's a, there's a complicated thing over which we have very little control, which tells us how much revenue we're going to have. And then there's another formula over which we have no control that tells us how what we spend translates into a tax rate. And as complicated as this all looks, how much we decide to spend is still the one factor we can control and the one factor that changes all of those other uh, changes what what the impact is on the people in the town. Thank is you. Is that right? That's very nicely put. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, no, okay, thank you. I just wanted to be sure I was I was following. Like it's it's yes. so complicated. Yeah, and yet this is actually yeah, so trying to make it simple. There's many, many files that make up this, and I and I will explain one town when I get all done, so that you can see it from a local level. Um, but yeah, this okay. seems to elude people over the years. They really seem to need to understand 
when we do the budget process, what it is that we can control and what it is that we can't control and those items that we can't control, when we're gonna learn that information. Right, so, no, again, this is super helpful. I, mean, I don't think I could have summarized it without this. So thank you very much. Okay, and the equalized yeah. pupils, again, we should have that December 15, the property yield, the first pass at that would be December 1st. Um, and the CLA would be around December 31st. They usually lately have been getting it out before the holidays. So those are the three critical pieces of information that we will get during the month of December. So that's why doing the budget process early is helpful, but it really doesn't bring it back to a tax rate until we get those critical um, documents. Lori, this, so is, gonna, Lori, this is Steve, if I can interject one more thing. There's actually another thing that the school board doesn't have any control over, and that's the number of equalized pupils. True. You can you can market your town and get more students, but the formula is still pretty much out of your control. <laughs> so I was going to go to the bottom of the page. If Jim could just kind of scroll that up, I would appreciate it. So oftentimes, um, there's another formula that the um, legislature has in statute and it's called the excess spending formula. The intent of that is to um, encourage schools to um, not spend too much or if they do knowingly, then they're going to have to pay taxes on a $2 for every dollar basis. And so what that means is if you're over the spending formula for the tax rate increase, it might've been a four cent increase. It might be six cents or eight cents, depending on how far you're over this formula. So over the years, the board has really been paying attention to this formula. And I wanted to review last year's formula and then explain a couple things that have changed. So last year, um, we would take our spending number it's letter D, which was the, um, let's see, the equalized pupils. So what they do is they take three or four things off your spending and kind of hold you harmless to those items. So if you've incurred debt to improve your school, if you have students who are over $50,000 at the time, um, now it's 60,000. Um, and if you had new teachers who required um, the school district to increase the budget for a retirement assessment, um, that means that they haven't worked in a school more than five years, um, then you have to pay an assessment in the budget process. So those three things we were able to subtract off our spending per pupil in order to come up with um, an excess spending per equalized pupil. So what does that mean? Just to get to the point, the 19,531, number that you saw up on letter E um, would become 18,654 because they're giving us credit for things that we've had um, in our budget that some schools have and some schools don't. So when you get all said and done, the state has a number that they provide to us every year and I'll be getting that I think by December 1st as well. So last year, if we had spent using this formula over 18,756, we would have been in the penalty formula. We call it the penalty formula. It's also called the excess spending formula. Um, so we were $102 per equalized pupil below the penalty formula. And I, I translated that into a, uh, an amount. So we were almost 147,000 below the penalty formula district wide. If it was in the negative, it would have been a reduction or cut that we would have needed to make to get below it. Um, but we were actually below it already by about 147,000. It's pretty close, um, kind of too close for comfort for me. Um, so today I also have been researching some other things. Um, last March, uh, the board did put on the ballot and the voters approved having our capital fund and our transfers to the capital fund um, per the statute, it's Title 24, and I don't have the number right in front of me, um, but that meant that this coming budget cycle, I can subtract 700,000, a little over 700,000 in this formula. So that's great news because that puts us further away from the penalty formula. 
um, but um, the special ed number and the new teacher's retirement assessment and the debt actually all change every year. So these aren't fixed formulas. So when you hear me talk in December, I'm going to be adding another row for the capital transfer. Um, so then in the future that can be reduced. And I have a contact Abby Hool at the Agency of Education. I'm confirming exactly what we have to do to make sure that full amount is eligible for this formula. Um, there is some required reporting and there is a re an approval process at the state in order to have that $700,000 um, in this formula. But I'm sure the district would want to follow whatever we have to to um, meet this requirement. It's in your best interest. Lori, so so if good. I may interrupt just for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. Could you explain what happens if we cross that excess spending threshold? Mm -hmm. Yes, so if you crossed it by, let's just say one penny in the district is $160,000. So that's a budget adjustment needed. So if you crossed it by 160,000, instead of having a one penny increase in the tax rate, you would have a two cent increase in the tax rate. And it wouldn't stay locally. That money would be in a formula um, reverted to the state education fund. I don't have all the details on the semantics on how that really, you know, from a cash flow point, but that's the basic overall um, way that it works. Does that answer your question, Scott? Yes, thanks. Um, so that basically for every $1 over, it costs you two, and you don't actually get to use those two, but um, the extra dollar goes into the education fund. Yeah. I'm using a penny because that's kind of the way a dollar works at the district level. Okay. All right. So um, then I was prepared to just go through a town of Berlin and just kind of explain um, how this looks over a period of time at the town. Um, it's on the next page. And I just picked Berlin because um, they're first on the list. So um, this is showing you over time um, some of these numbers are the same in every town and some are different. So what's the same in every town is the education spending per equalized pupil now that we are a merged district. Um, what's the same in every town is the property yield and the district spending adjustment. Um, the equalized pupils are different in every town, um, but overall it, it kind of equalizes itself out. Um, but what's different is the common level of appraisal. So you can see that in the town of Berlin in the middle, there's an area where it says common level of appraisal. Um, you can see the trend over time at this town for how the value of the property is comparing to sales. Um, and so you can see that there's an impact on the, tax, the local tax rate in Berlin. That would be different in every town. So it's, it's under the actual homestead tax rate. So you will see that 0.8 cents, which is $8 on a $100,000 property. That's what's different at every town. Um, over to the right, there's also a non-residential tax rate. And I'm gonna cover what's homestead versus non-residential. So the homestead is the home and two acres of primary residence. If you had a business or a secondary property vacation home in the town of Berlin, it's considered a non-residential property. The non-residential properties are, are have a different tax rate. So while the legislature set the dollar as the homestead tax rate, last year they set $1.62.8, it's up at the top, um, for the non-residential tax rate. So while the budget impacts the actual homestead tax rate, the statewide budget impacts the non-residential tax rate. So actually non-residents are paying more than homeowners or residents. You can see it's $10 more on a $100,000 property. It would go from $8 to $18. So if I can go through every town, but in the interest of time, I was thinking I should pause here and see if there's any specific questions. Um. Lori, this is this is Jill again. So I, I definitely don't think you need to go through every town. At least I, I, I'm good. Um, but I, just going back to what Stephen said, so the thing that we're really vulnerable to is 
it seems to me, is losses of students that are uh, too small to allow us to actually reduce a cost of, take, of, of serving students, right? Like, you know, you lose a few students while well, you still need the same number of teachers, the same number of support staff. You lose a lot of students, actually, maybe you, you, may, you can make an adjustment, but you, you lose a few, we're pretty vulnerable to that if we're trying to provide the same service from one year to the next. Is that a fair way of thinking about it? Yes, and I think um, every school in the state is currently seeing a large decline in pupils. I know um, Brian is planning to discuss this further at the regular meeting, yep. um, yeah. but it, it is a very deep concern. I think our, our projection in the near future is that we really need to start to um, kind of uh, look more at the cost per pupil and try to budget uh, more in line with the property yield inflator. So um, if we're having a large decline in pupils, it's not gonna hit all in one year. It's gonna hit over a two year averaging, um, but it, it's still not good news what we're seeing right now. And I'm mm -hmm. hopeful right. that, and maybe Brian wants to speak to that now and again later. No, I, I'm okay if we wait till the till the the meeting. Okay. I'm just trying to understand sort of yeah. how to think about the levers that are the ones that we both the ones we can pull and the ones that we're just sort of uh, buffeted by. So, um, mm -hmm. just trying to make sense of it. Okay. Yeah, and Thanks. the board um, has asked, or the finance committee has asked that I start pulling comparables. And so I was looking at the education spending per equalized pupil and coming up with some comparables for that. Um, as well as our special ed spending pre equalized pupil, uh, that information is at the state level. So for December, you're gonna get a pile of information that I think will be helpful as we are in the mid part of the budget process. Okay, that's awesome, thank you. Okay. Um, that was pretty much what, what I had for the training. Um, I hope it, met your expectations or if it didn't I guess I would love to hear what else we could have done differently tonight or um, what it is that we would need additional training on and we could have another meeting or um... uh, Lori sorry this is Jill I, th I found this really helpful the one thing that I think would have helped I think it's not on there but there's a whole bunch of key dates there's like a whole bunch you know you, you re reference various um, factors or you know whatever I don't can't think of the word for them but anyway the you know the various things that however they get set impact the you know ultimately impact the the final tax rates and the and the impact of the budget it would just be maybe helpful on this sheet for you to actually show like you know when do those usually come through because it's to me it's it's just really helpful to understand like we can't actually fully understand the impact of what we're doing until all those things cascade through. And so just to know the timing of them um, would be helpful. That would be my only suggestion. I found this super okay. helpful. I thought I've, I've had this explained to me before and not gotten it. So I, this was very helpful. Okay, thank you. And um, we do have them all noted on the budget timeline, but I, I will enhance the file so that in the future you'll have this in the file. Thank you. And I know um, every year I have this explained to me and then my mind um, ungets it well, during the period when we don't have to worry about it. And it's always really useful to, um, to hear it all again. Um, one question I had, Lori, how, um, if you wouldn't mind explaining what voters see when they vote, how the, um, how the budget article is actually presented on the ballot? Sure. Um, well, in Vermont, the budget article is only for budgeted expenditures. And so the voters vote on an expenditure total. They don't vote on an education spending total or any other number. Um, the revenues are still projections, um, but they actually just vote on the budgeted expenditures. Um, and and uh, Fleur. Finish with that and then I have a separate question. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, are, is the legislature still insisting that the budget article, it, it gives the, the budget and then it says, um, this represents an increase of X percent in educa education spending per equalized pupil? Is that still- As far as I know, that wording is identical. Um, we can research it further, but I have not been personally notified of any change to the wording of the article. It is a canned wording, as you mentioned. Thank you. 
Oh, thank you very much. And Fleur, did you have something? It, yeah, I just I just wonder, Lori, if it, for some you before had explained a little bit more about what the common level of appraisal and how it affects by town because not everybody appraises at the same time, and it really shows a little bit of that differentiation. Do you mind speaking to sure. it a little bit more, just for others? Yeah. So what I put on this chart sheet cheat sheet, that's what I'm calling it, in a little box down below actually shows you at Berlin that their tax rate is five cents lower than it would have been if their common level of appraisal was at 100%. So I don't know if you see that, but the um, equalized tax rate was $1.776. Um, their common level of appraisal is over 100%, so it saved the town five cents on the tax rate. It made their tax rate $1.723. Is that what you were, and then you'll see that number as a positive in Calais because they're under the 100%. Do you wanna to turn to that page so I could review that as well, please? It's the next page, Jim. Mm -hmm. So in Calais, their tax rate is 8.2 cents above the equalized because the common level of appraisal is at 9561. Is that what you would hope for, Floor? Yeah, or more? yeah, and I was just talking about like every town has different times where they do, which is a problem kind of in Vermont, right? Oh, okay, Vermont, okay. But now, that, especially now that we are reunified, so that part mm -hmm. is what I was hoping that you, so depending okay. where you live, yeah, yeah. So in um, Vermont, um, if your town gets, I believe it's below eighty-five percent, but I'm not one hundred percent sure, um, then you are required to complete a reappraisal townwide. Um, in the town of Barrie, currently, we're having a reappraisal right now. But if you're hovering around the 90%, you're not required to have a reappraisal. Um, the reappraisal costs money, takes time. Um, it could take a year or two. Uh, so some towns, you can see over time, everyone pretty much is, depends on how you sell your house. So what this is saying in Calais is people are selling properties at a little over 4% more than their value. So... Um, I don't know if I can explain it a different way. So if their house was 100,000, they're getting like 105,000 or 104,000. That's, yeah, that's what okay. I Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, that's exactly okay. it. Yeah, so, so that's what it's saying. And it's saying in Berlin that when they're selling their house, they're actually getting lower than the assessed value um, because it's over 100%. That's a little complicated. It's a tough pill to swallow. So if someone has a personal question and you think of it tomorrow, call me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, this is this is Steve again. If I can jump in, is that all right, Scott? Of course, Stephen, and then Kari after you. Um, what I'd like to add. So this is my understanding. So I'm talking from a taxpayer point of view <clears throat> that the common level the common level of appraisal affects this tax rate. But as a taxpayer between this tax rate and what I'm paying taxes on, it evens out. That's the purpose of the common level of appraisal. So as a taxpayer, I'm not saving any money. I'm paying it one way or another. Because that's what we hear as feedback from the from the taxpayer that okay so you're at Berlin you're at 103 percent so your tax rate went down well no my tax rate didn't go down because I'm paying paying for more than my property is assessed at you see what I'm saying I mean, for the savvy taxpayer, they're going to say, yeah, it makes it look good for your school board presentation that we saved five cents, but I didn't save five cents because I was paying for more property. I was paying for a higher property tax than my property is valued at. So it, it's, it all comes out in the wash. There's no real advantage one way or another. That's what the formula does. If you're being assessed, if you're, property is being assessed too high, then they make an adjustment that, that lowers it this way. Your property is being assessed too low, then you pay a penalty that raises it up. 
So it all comes out in the wash. It's just something I don't think we should harp on as an advantage too much. Is it intent to have every property in the entire state uh, equalized? That's what the common level of appraisal actually does. It puts towns at parity for the sales in their towns compared to their tax level, mm -hmm. tax value. Um, so Curry had a question too, you said? Yes, Curry. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I came a little late and Lori, I, you were covering this one when um, I joined, but if we could back up a couple slides maybe to the last one before the towns. Um, my question is about the excess spending formula and the impact of the debt allocation. So, um, if I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking about the retirement of, um, of our U32 debt, which happens next year, of course, we've been all waiting very patiently. Um, so if I understand it correctly, that's going to be an expense that we don't occur next year. And it's quite a bit, right? It's over a million. As I recall, um, no. Next year's only one hundred and fifty-five thousand. Next year, yeah, that's the, the remaining. The primary bond was paid off, and it in this one point one million reflects the the payment off the nine million dollar bond. Right, and this is is this the last the last payment this year? Um, the payment this year that's in the budget is one hundred and fifty-five thousand. Yeah. That will come off oh, in the future. It? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's not um, it's not a significant. I mean, it's significant, but but, um, but were you on when I was um, discussing about the capital uh, approval by the town at town meeting? Yeah, I guess I didn't understand it. If you could, if you could. Oh, go the seven hundred thousand. Okay, so at town meeting, um, this new merged district didn't have an established capital fund until town meeting March of twenty twenty, um, as for the new entity. So we had had um, the board put a warning to establish a capital fund per title 24 section, whatever. And by doing that and by following some criteria and following some rules at the state, we can add that as a new line in the excess spending formula. So we'll be able to subtract that 700,000 on, on that formula next year. I mean, this okay. budget cycle. All right, so that that's, an so that's good news. That we're paying, but it gives us a, it would give us some buffer against that threshold. Yes, it will. And, um, and then the $150,000 um, debt payment that goes away will reduce the expense, but it won't be, it won't, it will also reduce the threshold, right? So it's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? For Lori? Lori, do you want to continue or? I, I'm um, all done. That was my presentation. So if I did it quickly, I appreciate yeah, all the thanks. feedback and the questions. I think it's been a real good interactive meeting. Um, unless Brian has anything else to cover, I think I think we're ready to take a break before the meeting. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Lori, for your leadership and your help in uh, putting this together. So. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, Lori, Lori sp has spent a lot of time with me the last uh, few days, to say the least, uh, break breaking the new superintendent into uh, the budget here in Vermont and in Washington Central. And uh, thank you very much, Lori. Appreciate it. I have one more question for Brian. It is uh, You've worked in a bunch of different states. Are the um, school finance rules as arcane in other states as they are here? I actually wouldn't say it's arcane. I would say it's very unique and very, uh, I, I would say that uh, depending on who you talk to uh, with different superintendents around the country that I do know, uh, they are very favorable towards the Vermont uh, way it works because uh, uh, I know we talk about equity and it seems that the formula, while some, some folks may not like it, uh, you know, there's always ways to improve things. It seems to be a very good way of uh, doing doing business uh, with the way the state runs it here. It's, it's definitely much more uh, equity equity based in many ways. Nice to hear, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, so it's five forty one. Um, we can take a break, and and I think should take a break. 
uh, until when? Do we want do we want to take ten minutes and then get started up again, or um, uh, do you want to go until six? Brian, please. Yeah, can I just say uh, one thing? Just uh, you know, I'm ready to go whenever everyone else is. I just want to let all the board members. Know. I did send you an email uh, a few minutes, uh, several minutes ago, just to make sure we are addressing something right now. But uh, we're on top of it, and uh, I'll give a little brief update at the board meeting. Okay. Understood. Thank you very much. Scott, one question um, is that we had said to people please. six o'clock, so we might be throwing them off if we start earlier. So just. We were planning we on a 15-minute break. Before six? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so have dinner. <laughs> I, I just want to tell people. Right, right, exactly. I, Dorothy. I, I, I will not be at the rest of the meeting. Um, I I had I just can't stay up for it tonight. I, had, I, I was up early for it seemed like an emergency. It wasn't, but I lost about four hours sleep, and I'm not going to make it, so. I decided to do this and skip the rest. So see you next time. <laughs> Wonderful, Dorothy. Thank Happy you. Happy Thanksgiving, being Dorothy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take care, both of you. Goodbye. Okay, so um, with that, I think let's um, let's just recess until six o'clock then. And many thanks to all members of the public who joined. Really happy to see you. I hope you got something out of this. Um, Anyway, see you all soon.